Hello everybody, it's Pastor Nick here. And again, I just wanna say thank you for praying for me and my family. Uh, we are doing much better now, praise God. Uh, continue to pray for all those that are sick and uh, I know that there's many. Uh, our prayer lists are really long. Uh, just continue to pray. Uh, but I did want to say thank you again for all of your prayers. Uh, today, we are beginning to look at the writings of Paul to young Timothy. And uh, we're in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through chapter 3 and verse 16. Uh, Timothy was a pastor and fellow laborer of Paul. Paul calls Timothy his son here. Now we know that Paul was not Timothy's actual father, but he was his father in the ministry. What is interesting here is that Paul adds something to his usual greeting. He often wrote to others and he said, grace and peace be to you. But here he adds mercy. Paul was writing to a young pastor and it's as if he was saying, you are going to need God's mercy. Yes, you need grace. Uh, yes, you need peace, but you need mercy. Uh, you need it for yourself and you need it for others that you watch out for. Uh, Paul writes to Timothy here and he tells him that he left him at Ephesus to instruct them in doctrine. There are those who were proclaiming unsound doctrine and it was Timothy's responsibility to teach the church at Ephesus correctly and how to rightly divide the word of God. Uh, Paul then reveals how he is thankful to God for putting him into the ministry. He says that before he was a persecutor and the chiefest of sinners, but he was given mercy and grace. At the end of chapter one, Paul charges Timothy to fight a good war. This reveals that this isn't a game that we're in. It is a very serious thing and it is a war over people's souls. In chapter 2, Paul tells Timothy to pray for all men, including those in positions of authority, that we may lead a peaceable life. So think about this in terms of where we are today in our world. Uh, we need to pray for our leaders that we would be allowed to freely worship God as he desires for us to do so. Jesus is the only mediator that we have between God and man. Without him, we could not even approach God. And so be thankful for Jesus Christ. Men are commanded here to pray. And Paul then says that women should adorn themselves modestly, uh, not trying to bring attention to themselves in any kind of sexual way. The focus should be on the Lord and not on you or not on any one individual. He then very clearly says here that women are not to teach men in any way within the church. Uh, there is this common thought today that it's okay for women to be a pastor, uh, but this goes directly against what the Bible teaches. Uh, we don't get to make our own rules. Our culture does not get to make the rules. God makes the rules and his word clearly says that women are not to teach or preach to men. In chapter three, Paul continues by talking about the qualities of a pastor. Notice he says, uh, one of the qualities are, it says, if a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. Uh, notice that it is talking to men. We read these things uh, that, but one of them that stands out uh, is that he must be the husband of one wife. Again, the pastor must be a man. Uh, after the office of a pastor is described, we read about deacons and their wives. They also have certain qualities that they must do in order to fill their office. At the conclusion of the chapter, Paul tells Timothy that he was writing these things so that they would know how to behave in the house of God. What that means is that if we do not do things this way, then we are not behaving properly in God's house. Now, you can have your own opinion about these things, but I'm going to stick with the Bible and what God has to say, not my own opinions, not my own reasonings, not my feelings. Uh, 
And so I'm just going to tell you that if you have an opinion that is different than this, you're wrong. And you are against the teaching of the Bible. Uh, you need to repent and submit yourself to the word of God. Why be so careful with what happens within a church? Because Paul says here that it is the pillar and ground of the truth. It is what holds the truth up for the world to see and to hear. When things aren't the way that they're supposed to be within the church, then the truth is perverted before the world around it. They, they see it take place. And so you see, this is a very serious thing. It's not a, um, when we talk about women being pastors or ministers and all that stuff, can I just tell you that it's not about being chauvinistic. It's not about, uh, you know, degrading women or women are less than men or anything like that. But it's simply that that is the way that God ordained it. Uh, and so we need to follow God. And when we don't follow God uh, and we do our own plan and we do our own thing, we actually are making a mockery of his truth. We're making a mockery of his word. Now we're going to be looking at Proverbs 25, verses 17 to 22. Proverbs 25, 17 to 22. Uh, in verse 17, we see, Do not stay too long at your neighbor's house, or he may not want you to come back because you have outstayed your welcome. So use some wisdom there. Verse 18, Someone who bears false witness is like a weapon. Uh, they destroy and they divide. And so we see this happening in our world today. It's happening all over the place. Uh, those that bear false witness, and they tear things up. Uh, verse 19, trusting in untrustworthy people in a time of need can be like trying to eat with a broken tooth or standing upon a broken foot. So in other words, you are going to fall. And so be careful who you trust to defend you, because in your moment of weakness, and your moment of need, uh, that person better be reliable. Uh, in verse 20, being insensitive to a person's hurt may cause them to be angry. Uh, don't try to cheer them up in their time of need or their time, uh, their time of mourning. Uh, if they're mourning, sometimes people need just to mourn. Uh, and you telling jokes might be inappropriate. Uh, and it may actually cause them to hurt even more. Finally, verses 21 and 22, we see that when your enemy is in need, you need to be the one to supply their need. Uh, so doing this is like heaping coals on them, it says. There's an old saying that says, kill them with kindness. Uh, people don't understand how someone that they hate could be nice to them, and that will cause them to crumble or to feel guilty of how they feel or how they act. Uh, it will cause them to think about their actions and what they've done to you. Let's bow our heads. Our wonderful God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace, your mercy. Uh, your peace. And Father, I just pray uh, that we would live this day for you. Father, help us to stick with your word. Help us to stay true to you, no matter what others around us might think or say. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.